Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about bringing pets to Thailand. So your first step, of course, is going to be what are the legal requirements for you to get your dog or cat here to Thailand. So I'm going to put two links down in the description. Why two links? Well, one of them is from the embassy from Thailand in the United States. And one of them is from another Thai embassy from another country. The reason I put two there is to let you compare their slight differences. I don't know why it's a little confusing. But the biggest thing that I saw that was differences is that one of them said that there were certain breeds that could not come into the country. And the one from the U.S. said there were no breed restrictions, which causes some concern. So I wanted you to be aware that it doesn't seem like all of the embassies are agreeing on what you can bring to Thailand and what breeds you cannot bring. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind the time frames, their shots and other things you're going to need to do to bring your animals here to, th to Thailand. But just make sure you're looking at the time frames because you need to have shots done by a certain time frame before you come to Thailand and there's an expiration date. And I know that we brought our two dogs here to Thailand and we almost didn't make it with one of the requirements that was needed two years ago to bring our dogs here to Thailand. Now, if you're wondering if your animal would need to be quarantined, well, they're only going to be quarantined if they come here and they show any signs of sickness. So make sure that your pet is healthy before you come over here. Another thing that seems to be agreed upon from these multiple websites is that the dog or cat needs to be over four months old. So don't bring a newborn puppy over. That will not work. So now that you've looked at the requirements for Thailand to get your animals here to Thailand, you also need to comply with the airline that you're traveling with. That means don't book your flight until you've researched it really well on what would be the best airline to bring your dog or cat to Thailand. This is something my wife and I took very seriously when we picked an airline to go on. The one we picked was Qatar Airlines, and let me explain why. One of the things two years ago when we came here that they did say they did for pets on that long of a flight is that on the layover that they would change out if the animal used the bathroom they would clean it out and make everything fresh you know give it fresh food and water take care of the animal basically so the other airlines that we researched did not do this so we can verify for a fact that qatar airlines did do what they said they were going to do how do we know this because whenever the air, when we dropped our animals off in the, the carrier, they they zip, they use zip strips to seal the uh, carrier up and they were black. And when we got to Thailand, they had changed colors because somebody obviously clipped them off and went inside. Another sign was that the bedding inside, you know, the, the absorbent material that was in there had been changed out. So somebody obviously changed things out and there was no bathroom mess whatsoever when we were at Thailand. So we were very happy about that. And they say they do check on the pets during the flight. So we felt pretty good about that. So just keep all these things in mind. And some of the airlines don't allow certain breeds. So just because Thailand will allow your breed to come into Thailand, doesn't mean that the airline will allow your dog breed. So definitely make sure that the airline you go on is going to be pet friendly and they will accommodate the breed of animal that you are bringing to Thailand. Now, once you get to Thailand, let's talk about accommodations and how accommodating are places here for pets. Well, for the most part, if you're looking to move into a condo, they are your least pet friendly option. A lot, and I mean a lot of condos do not allow dogs and the ones that do are gonna be your older, mm, kind of dilapidated ones, your older ones. So keep that in mind. So it's a lot more 
easily easier to do if you're renting a house or a town home something like that from an individual landlord now if you're going online and you're trying to find a place to rent i'll always suggest that you use a realtor you don't have to pay them anything the landlord pays the realtor it's free for you to use and let them know that you're looking for a house or you're looking for a town home that allows pets and a lot of times if you're doing an online search yourself you will see where they say pet friendly but let's say you find a house that you really like and it doesn't say anything about pets have your realtor ask them anyway and you can even give some pictures of your pets if they're small and cute to your realtor to show the landlord and go i know you don't allow pets but look at these cute little things and sometimes they'll change their mind it worked for us the place we're staying at now did not allow pets we sent pictures to our realtor she showed them to the uh, the uh, landlord and the landlord said, sure, they're cute. All right, why not? So we were allowed pets. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for accommodations. Now let's talk about hot I mean, the hotels. Yes, hotels for a minute. A lot of hotels do not allow dogs. So I'm going to tell you what my wife and I do when we travel inside of Thailand. We use the Airbnb route because Airbnb has a filter where you can look for only the pet friendly Airbnb houses. So if we want to go with the dogs, let's say to another city, we will rent an Airbnb that allows dogs and we have no problem whatsoever. When we originally came to Thailand, we made sure that we were going, booked an Airbnb to stay at that allowed dogs. So we didn't have any issue with that. Now, since we're talking at this point that you're here in Thailand, what about restaurants? I've had some people ask me on the channel, can I bring my dog or cat or whatever to a restaurant? Well, we don't really see that much. Uh, we don't see animals in restaurants. I'm not saying it's banned. I just don't see signs that say you can or that you can't. And I don't see anyone really bringing their dog or cat to restaurants for the most part. Even where I'm at right now, there are some dogs that just kind of randomly walk around. And that's kind of the problem you're going to have at most restaurants that have an outside setting. There's a thing here called soy dogs. And if you're not familiar with the term, it basically means street dogs. These are dogs that are out and about. They really don't have an owner. Somebody's feeding them. Could be a restaurant and it could be a Buddhist temple. You're going to find a lot of soy dogs around Buddhist temples. More on that in a minute. But on a lot of restaurants, you're going to have these dogs running around. And let's say you have a well-behaved dog. You're outside. It's sitting there at the table. It wouldn't surprise me if a soy dog went by and that's its territory to start barking or make a scene with your dog. And I imagine that would be an embarrassing scenario. It's happened right here at the place I'm at right now. I've seen it happen. And I think it was two different soy dogs that came upon each other here. And there was a little bit of a spectacle to to see there so keep that in mind if you're wanting to bring your dog to a lot of different restaurants my suggestion to you is go to the restaurant without your pet first and maybe ask the waiter waitress the owner of the place if it's okay now back to the buddhist temples you're going to want to avoid walking your dog anywhere near buddhist temples why because they feed street dogs so therefore the dogs feel like they live there at the temple and they will guard it meaning that is their territory even if you have a dog let's say a cute little chihuahua in a backpack they will find it you know they can sniff that out and then they're going to surround you and they're going to start barking and they're going to make a big spectacle out of things and the monks are going to ask you to leave so i've seen it happen before you don't want to get a dog anywhere near a temple just because there are so many soy dogs and they're going to be very territorial about you bringing another dog to their area. Now you may say, were well, these soy dogs, are they going to affect me walking my dog if I just want to take my dog for a walk? Well, possibly. The dogs I have are small. We have a mini Dachshund and we have a Jack Russell Terrier. I can easily pick them up. So when we're walking and I walk Ethel, my Jack Russell all the time, when I'm walking her, we do encounter soy dogs. And if they come over to check Ethel out, I'll just pick her up real quick. Not an issue. They walk away. So if you had a big breed that you couldn't pick up, I'm not sure what would happen. 
Um, that's uncharted territory, but I'm just going to say that uh, it just all depends on the dog. They could pick a fight. It could not be a good thing. So if you do live in a gated neighborhood, you shouldn't have much of a problem walking around the streets. But if you don't live in a gated neighborhood and you're wanting to take your dogs out and about, one of those days you're going to run across a soy dog. So just be prepared for that. Now, if you're wondering what it's like to own a dog here in Thailand, like what do I do about vets or what do I do about grooming or what about the pet food my dog needs? good food and my cat needs high-end food they got all that here so we do have our dogs groomed as a matter of fact we just had our mini dachshund groomed just the other day so that's not an issue whatsoever we've been to three different groomers depending on where we've lived in thailand they've all done a wonderful job and it doesn't cost very much at all and we've also taken our dogs to the vets the vets here are really good and knowledgeable so they are trained very well there's no issue whatsoever there with taking care of your animal and the pet stores. The pet stores have everything you could need. Now they do have the high-end dog food. You're gonna have to research it on your own meaning. They're not gonna have all the name brands that you're probably used to from the country you came to, came from. However, they will have dog food that should accommodate even the most picky dog owner. So just keep that in mind. You need to go into some, some of the bigger uh, pet supply stores and you'll find the biggest selection and you can also find pet food on Lazada which is kind of like Amazon here in Thailand it's called Lazada and you can order a lot of things right off of that one more thing about walking your dog here in Thailand is that during the hotter times of the month or even let's just pick any day during the middle of the day may not be the best time to walk your animal because the concrete the streets are so incredibly hot because of that, I walk my dog at night and you, you do encounter some strange things at night that I thought I might want to bring up as well. So when I'm walking my Jack Russell at night, we I've caught, now remember it's dark and let's say some of the street lights are out. I've noticed uh, my dog sniffing something and I shined a light. It was a gigantic scorpion in the middle of the road. All right. There was also a time when our, my Jack Russell was sniffing something and I shined a light and it was a big black crab and another time was a gigantic lizard so you never know oh, yeah there was one other time i saw my dog sniffing something and it was a kitten well i knew i needed to get uh, ethel away from that really quick because that means it's a kitten that lives out on the street that means there's a mom nearby and i'm sure that that cat would defend its kitten to the end so there's a lot of things you always need to be aware of when you're walking your dog in a tropical place like thailand now what about pet sitters and kennels they do have kennels here they do have pet sitters now if your dog or cat is you know just an indoor animal they're not used to the outdoors i don't think you should probably pick some of the kennels that mostly have their stuff outdoors just because it's incredibly hot every day here and the weather can be extreme but i mean if your dog or is used to being outside a lot that may be a good option for you depending on the size so we've used both kennels and we've used um, pet sitters both have worked out well some sitters of course are better than others so just uh, research that as best as you can i would at tell you to go on some expat group here in thailand and ask for recommendations and you can at least feel a little bit better about leaving your pet with a pet sitter that was highly recommended. So I hope that answers some of your questions about not only bringing your animals here, but also what it's like to live here with it. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. We have all things Thailand and specifically in Chiang Mai, which is in the northern region of Thailand. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up down below. If you want, you can contribute to the channel. There's a thanks button below or you can buy us a coffee. There's a link down in the description. We do have our merchandise store, so there's a link in the description, so make sure to check that out as well. And also, if you're needing any one-on-one -on -one advice, go to Buy Me A Coffee, and there's a link there for one-on-one -on -one where we can do a video chat, and I'll try to answer some of your questions for you. But anyway, thank you for watching. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing, and until next time, kap kun kap.